In international news, protesters are surrounding Hong Kong's legislature this hour. It's part of a day-long demonstration against a controversial law that would send people back to mainland China to face charges. Our Asia correspondent, Sastra Petrosik, has the latest. For most of the day today, protesters have laid siege to the Hong Kong legislature surrounding it uh, and, uh, and trying to break inside through different doors and windows. They've actually taken off parts of the building, some fencing, and uh, rammed these doors, in some cases, breaking right through the glass and uh, potentially going inside. Uh, inside, riot police have been filling the hallways. They are uh, all suited up and ready to go uh, with gas masks on in some cases, but certainly with helmets and shields and uh, ready to repel any kind of an incursion. Interestingly, the two sides have stayed on their respective sides of a broken glass. So the police have stayed inside. The protesters have generally stayed outside and between them over the last little while, uh, some of the pro-democracy members of the legislature, the ones who are on the same side as the protesters in many ways, have been trying to mediate. They've been trying to negotiate so that to prevent the police from coming outside and uh, from lots and lots of injuries. There were, in fact, confrontations earlier in the day on the streets of Hong Kong before dawn and right after um, as the protesters tried to uh, disrupt a ceremony which was taking place, which actually is supposed to mark the, uh, the handover of Hong Kong from Britain to China. That is an annual anniversary, flag raising and speeches and champagne toasts as they happen today as well. But on the outside, of course, obscenities were being shouted at the uh, Chinese and Hong Kong officials and the protesting started. Through all of this, though, at the other end of Hong Kong, hundreds of thousands of people were carrying on a very peaceful march, as we've seen over the past number of weeks. No exact numbers, but uh, could be more than a million people who snaked their way through the main roads of Hong Kong, trying to make exactly the same point, that they are afraid of China, that they don't think that their government in Hong Kong is representing them very well, and they want to get rid of one particular law that's been proposed, which would allow people from Hong Kong to be extradited to mainland China to face trial very afraid of that. That is at the root of all of these protests. But the government, while it has said it is putting that law uh, on the shelf, it's not going to go ahead with it for now, it has refused to withdraw it entirely. And the head of Hong Kong, Carrie Lam, while she has apologized, has also refused to step down, to resign, which is what many of the protesters want her to do. So a bit of a standoff, and it's not clear where all of this is going, but unless one side or the other backs down significantly, it's unlikely that this is going to stop anytime soon. Sasha Petrosik, CBC News, Beijing. Okay, so let's stick with this story because joining us right now from Hong Kong is Canadian Edward Chan, who has been living in Hong Kong for several years now. And Edward, thank you for uh, making time to join us. I understand you've been at the protest today. Where are you right now? I'm actually uh, very close to the uh, MOT area, which is uh, right um, a, a bit across, just opposite to the uh, government headquarters and also the legislative council. Okay, so explain to me what what you've witnessed today, what's been happening out in the streets. I think today, um, just like the, all the other two protests uh, just happened uh, in within this month, uh, it has been a very peaceful day. Um, I think um, it, the weather here is very hot today. It's like a 30, 34, 35 degrees Celsius. But um, it took quite a long time for most of the protesters to walk from uh, the beginning, which is the uh, Victoria Park, all the way to MOT and also Central. Um, I, I don't know how many people actually joined, but my, my um, estimation would be kind of like uh, at least like, you know, like a 200 or 300 people, thousand people, but that's not the, any, any official numbers. It's just based on my observations. But uh, in general, I think um, the atmosphere is, um, it was very peaceful throughout the whole process. And the protest is still ongoing right now as, as we speak. Edward, why are you out there in the streets? What is it that has you concerned? 
I think, um, you know, as a, as a person like living in Hong Kong for such a long time, um, we all believe that uh, it's very important for Hong Kong to maintain the rule of law, as well as uh, we also maintain the one country, two systems. However, since the government has proposed this um, anti, uh, that that's the extradition bill amendment, that is going to affect the rule of law of Hong Kong in general. Um, and a lot of people, especially uh, people that uh, stay in Hong Kong doing business, they are very concerned about it because Hong Kong has our own um, special like uh, common law system and uh, is also like um, separate from China in general. So as a business person, as a person working in the financial industry, we believe that uh, we don't want to have any change. And whatever change that um, kind of like uh, affects the uh, sort of like the, the uniqueness of the common law uh, being uh, exercised in Hong Kong, that would uh, also affect, affect the business in general. So, uh, well, are, are you still with me, Edward? Yes, yes, I'm with you. Can oh. you hear me? Yes, I can. I'm so sorry. Keep going. The line just froze for a moment. I see. Yeah. So, so the main purpose is like um, most of the people here, uh, we, we are not satisfied with uh, the chief executive, Carrie, Carrie Lam's uh, apology, apology, as well as uh, the government basically re refused to officially withdraw the extradition amendment bill. And the people have concern about that. This bill will be revoked again at any time in the future. Um, and Edward, also, let me jump in for one second. Let me jump in for one second because we sure. are running out of time. As I'm speaking to you and we're seeing you, we're also looking at the images of hundreds, possibly thousands of people outside the legislature. As you mentioned, uh, you're quite close to that area. It is now nighttime in Hong Kong. Are you worried that things are going to get violent, that people are going to get hurt? So far, the police have not pushed aggressively. What if they start doing that? I think at this point, um, the atmosphere is getting a little bit tense. Uh, some of the people are actually uh, crowded uh, at the very near to the Legislative Council. I'm not sure what is going to happen, but uh, I guess uh, some people decided to stay there and uh, there's a high possibility that the government is going to do something. The police is going to clean up the, uh, the, the area. So that's why we see people that um, you're trying to wear helmets or the, like uh, uh, the mask, just prepare for anything would happen. But at this stage, the atmosphere is a little bit tense, but nothing has actually happened yet. You are a Canadian citizen. If the extradition law goes through, if things get worse in Hong Kong, are you going to move back to Canada? I think this is uh, one thing that um, uh, a lot of Canadians are considering as well, because um, we all like Hong Kong, we love Hong Kong. Unfortunately, if things is going to get worse, then for ourselves, for our next generation, I guess we, we might have to consider to move back to Canada, which is like, uh, because we all embrace democracy and freedom. So that's a very high possibility that we are going to do that. And your, But your preference would be to stay in Hong Kong? Well, my preference is like, if things keep going well, then of course we, love, we like to do business in Hong Kong, we like to uh, live in Hong Kong. But if the government is continuing to, to, to exercise a lot of like, um, you know, policies that against uh, Hong Kong people will, then uh, it's a very high chance that uh, I would decide to move back to Canada as well. Okay, Edward, thank you so much for your time. Stay thank safe out there and uh, we will keep in touch with you. Sure, thank you. Edward Chan is a Canadian living in Hong Kong. He has been attending the protests in the city today.